This is what I call the Creed Standard. Short episodes to remind us of how to respond to the world with our best, and the mindset we have to maintain to uphold our promise to be better humans. Don't expect perfection. Don't expect to be flawless. Just remember that standard. (sighs) Wow. So how is everybody handling the new year already? We're almost a month in. It's been my birthday. That was awesome. I went on just a small trip, just a a solitude, be by myself, think kind of trip. Uh, A few of you know about it. It was good. There are things that could have been different. You know, when it comes down to really focusing on what we need for ourselves, the crazy part is we can dream and we can fantasize and we can feel very sure and confident about our capabilities when we really think about it and we've been motivated and we've had things show us the way and show us how capable we really are. And the problem really is just all of the distraction. And I took a trip into Seattle and took a drive up towards the north of the state and then drove into Vancouver. And mine was all about just being on my own and solitude and trying to find answers for myself. And it seems like when I get so caught up in the world and caught up in everything that I've got on hand, I not only lose focus, but am searching for some sort of silence to give me that focus, if that makes any sense. And sometimes I think that we can get so inside our head about what we need that we're really just not giving ourselves the opportunity to slow down enough in life to realize what's right in front of us. And this has happened to me a couple times now, and I'm not going to say it's failure. I think I've just realized that I'm so ridiculously in search of something. Like I'm so focused on finding some sort of answer and some sort of epiphany that I get so caught up in it and don't realize that it'll come naturally and organically if I just live the way that my mind and body and heart tell me to sometimes. If I just let go and lean into things rather than search for things and, you know, maybe my work would come in smoother. Maybe my passion would come in smoother. Maybe my day-to-day life would just be smoother. And with how the world runs now, maybe that's what it takes for all of us is to really slow down and pay attention to our emotions and how we want to react and how we want to connect. Because I think the fast pace gives us stress and that stress takes us off focus of what's really, really important, right? And actually, that is the creed standard we're going to talk about today is focus. So let's get started, eh? Pick that up from Canada. This is where we really fuck it up. This is where things really turn into that barren desert that we despise so much, but the thing that we continuously tread through. I remember the first few months when I started to open my eyes to what I was really capable of. Before I knew what I was going to really do with my life and where my focus laid completely, 100%. And I was so fucking hyped about what was to come, even though I hadn't had it figured out yet. And I was visualizing my glory and my freedom before I even knew what it was to really visualize my goals. Before I really knew that it would take a detailed idea of what I wanted to actually make it attainable. I remember where all I could think about was, what could I learn? What has the world been lying about? What has it been hiding from me? How can I remove myself from this mess? Where's my clarity? What has been confusing me? How can I inspire people to run along with me? And 
every guy tends to notice everything that passes by him, right? Everything beautiful, everything curvy. And I was just too into what I was becoming. And I appreciate that time then. And not having that then, I think it showed me and could show all of us where we start to get off. Once we've had so much of that in moment, we can then detect when we're not there. Dude, I was I was ignoring women. No offense, ladies, but that's when it's really good. Guys have a homing beacon when it comes to our goals. We may acknowledge the exterior world, but it's not our priority. And that is the flow, and that is the beauty of life. And that is when a man really feels true to himself and really feels his masculinity and his manhood and his character and his personality all coming into play because he knows what he's after. Think of when you were a teenager. Think about how dedicated and focused you were in a football game or a volleyball match, a theatrical play, a musical piece. I played trumpet, by the way, in band. Got first chair a couple times, but your mind was in one place. It was honed in on creating your best, on being the best at that thing. And nothing else mattered in those moments. What a beautiful fucking feeling. Where the hell did all those moments go? What was it that took that away from us? Two things, really, in my opinion. Firstly, we got convinced that we had to grow up to put our effort for our dreams into the drawer and save them for retirement. Only, you can't be a badass at your dreams if they're stuffed in that drawer. And then as soon as you pull them out, by the time you get to that retirement, they'll fall out of your hand because you're now too old and weak to hold on to them. Secondly, the world has force-fed us so many distractions, so much on purpose. Focus is saved for our vacation time, or so they tell us. They fed us of this American dream and had us become their sheep until we're aware enough and mindful enough to know that we've been led by a shepherd this whole time. And there's so much social media marketing and needs quote-unquote needs that they put in front of us and we can't focus on shit for more than a few minutes without thinking on something else our brains do best at doing one thing forget multitasking just fucking forget it 10 percent at 10 things constantly is incomparable to doing one thing at 100 percent or 110 percent depends on how you see the world this new huge influx of information is causing us to just burn out, man. And we are meant to take the task at hand and dominate it. That's where our greatness truly shines, not multitasking. I mean, does an NFL player think about anything else but the game when he's playing it? Hell no. Does a gymnast think of anything but a perfect routine? Of course not. How about a writer, since that's a long-term focus? Still no. A writer has to sit and focus in for hours at a time to hit a deadline. Truly, as our greats today and the greats of yesterday prove, they dedicated to one thing. They talk about being obsessed. They talk about outworking everybody else. So doesn't that make sense? They may have been great at many things, and all of us can be, but what are people most known for? How great they are in a particular area. That's why everybody looks up, up to them, because of how expert, how niche, how specialized they are at this one thing. That's what makes them so amazing. Has anyone really ever become famous, successful, wealthy for having a title of best multitasker? We have so much time to do so many things, but we're wasting it on trying to multitask and trying to have all the things and we're burning out our first world lives allow us to accomplish so much we have so much opportunity and we have so much liberty and freedom but when we are passionate when we want to follow a dream it's the one thing focus that will get us there the 
in the moment situations, the do or die work we put into them for extended periods of time. We need that focus back that we had when we were playing sports as kids. We need the focus that dissolved everything else when nothing else in our brain was important, when we couldn't see past what was right in front of us. I say this humbly because this is what brought me to today's subject. Somewhere along the way, I started to fall back into place with trying to do everything and losing my focus and losing my passion. And I've been wondering where it was at until it finally hit me straight in the face and said, the one thing, the one thing. And so with my passion went all my focus because I stopped paying attention to the one thing. So find the one thing. Then find the one or two supporting things, the things that make you feel feel connected and human to the rest of the world and the things that may be a hobby or a way to get away. But don't worry so much about the rest. So much of our lives we worry about what is actually automatic for us. The brain does this on purpose. It does this to conserve energy. It creates habits and the repetition of those habits creates automation. And there's so much of your life that you can just not stress about and rely on that automation. If you want to worry, worry about the trajectory of your life. Where do you want to go? What do you see yourself as in the future? How often can you focus on the now and dominate being in the moment with it? This is what we need to find. You've got this, my friends. Stay strong and say it to yourself. Stay rebel-minded.